This is probably the simplest digipeter we've ever built on the channel. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. If you want to skip straight to the tutorial, I'll leave a timestamp here on the screen. But real quick, the way this idea was born is someone asked me when we were at the Huntsville Ham Fest if we could use a MobiLinked TNC uh, as the interface between the computer and the radio to build a digipeter. And I've kind of played with the MobiLinks a little bit in the past in this capacity, but not to build a full-on digipeter. So I came home and started playing with that. And it turns out it's one of the simplest projects I've ever done to get the Digipeter up and running. Now, there are a couple of steps we do need to do to get the MobiLink TNC connected to the computer using Bluetooth. But once that's established, it's literally just customizing a few things inside of Yak and you can have a Digipeter on the air. Now, I will go through the steps to show you how to get the Digipeter working, how to get uh, GPS working, if you already have your GPS software installed, and if you wanted to make this an eye gate, we'll cover that as well. Now, why would you want to build something like a portable APRS Digipeter? I mean, it's not something we're going to use every single day, but when we do need it, it's really handy to have on hand. Let's take just one example that I ran into recently. When we were up at Monsanto State Park for the Huntsville Ham Fest, no one could get into the local eye gate with their HT. Because of that, I went ahead and put my APRS Digipeter up on the air uh, when we were at the state park. So I set it up at the RV. After I got that Digipeter up, uh, up and running and the antenna up at about 25 feet, Everyone in the park could then get into the local eye gate through my Digipeter. So that's just one small example of why you might want to take a look at building something like a portable APRS Digi. All right, enough of this. Let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and let me show you guys how simple this is. So let's see if we can get this thing set up and configured. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and open up your Bluetooth devices. And we'll go ahead and click the search tab until we see the uh, TNC3 show up. You'll see that it's right there. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to click the check mark right here that uh, tells the computer to trust this device. Then I'm just going to click this little icon. Looks like a key beside it to create uh, pairing with the device. So we'll go ahead and click on that and we should get a notice here that it connects and then you'll see that it will disconnect here in just another second or two. There we go. There's the disconnect and what's happening that same thing happens on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Linux uh, machine will connect to it but it doesn't see any devices that it can use so it goes ahead and disconnects. Actually, on the Raspberry Pi, you will actually get a little notification telling you that there's no usable services on the device. That's okay. All we need is to make sure that it uh, at least attempted to pair and that it's uh, fully trusted here. So let's go ahead and close that. And the next thing we need to do is open up the terminal window. In the terminal window, we want to run HCI tool space scan. We'll go ahead and press return and give that a couple of seconds. Now, sometimes this won't find it every single time on the first try. Sometimes it'll take a couple of tries. I've had it take three or four tries before, before it actually sees it. In this case, it got it on the first attempt. What that gave us was that gave us the MAC address for the MobiLinked TNC. Now that we have the MAC address, we can go ahead and connect uh, to the MobiLinked TNC. And we do that with this command here, sudo space rf com space connect space forward slash dev forward slash rf com zero. After that zero, we're going to give a space and then we're going to copy and paste the MAC address right here that we just saw a second ago. So let's go ahead and paste that in. Now, depending on which TNC you're running as to whether you have to do this next step or not, 
The TNC-3 is unique. It's different from the 2 and the 4 because it operates on channel 6. The 2 and the 4 operate on channel 1. I'll go ahead and show you guys what I mean right here uh, by pressing enter. We'll give it my password and we're going to get an error here. It's going to connect and disconnect immediately. And you'll see that right here. It connected uh, and then it gave us a disconnected. And the reason is this is a TNC3. It tried to connect it on channel 1, which is the default when you're doing this. And the TNC3 needs channel 6. So uh, if you're running a TNC2 or a TNC4, you could go just with this command here. For the TNC3 only, you're going to put a 6 out there after the MAC address. So you give it uh, the MAC address space 6. Go ahead and press return. And we should see that it is connected and press control C to hang up. And we got that well, went away. But we did get that uh, pop up in the top right corner that said it was connected as well. Now we can leave everything sitting right here just like it is. We're uh, done with this. We don't want to hang up. We want that to stay connected. So I'm just going to minimize that screen right there. Let's go ahead and open up Yak. Once Yak opens up, I'm going to get this dialog box that no APRS ports are configured, and that's what I expect. If you, uh, it asks you if you would like help. You can choose yes, and it would go through the uh, wizard with you. I'm going to choose no, and we're just going to walk through this manually. Once everything loads up, let's go ahead and come up to File. We'll come down to Configure, and we're going to click on Expert Mode. Now, we will do this in a couple of different steps just so we can test things as we go along. I do have my uh, Yezu FT5HT sitting here beside me. We'll be using it to test. Uh, back to the FT65 connected to the MobiLink TNC. First thing I want to do is I want to come right here under Ports, and I'm going to click Add. Once this box pops up, I'm going to uh, make sure that serial underscore TNC is set here for the port type. I'm going to click the drop down menu right here and you should see that forward slash dev forward slash RFCOM zero that uh, we worked with just a second ago. Let's show you guys real quick. That's coming from right here. This uh, where we connected to dev RFCOM zero. Once you get that, we'll leave the baud rate at 9600, and we do need to give it a call sign. Now, in this case, let's use KM4ACK-3. Transmit, we want to go ahead and enable it. And that's the only thing we're going to do for the moment. So let's go ahead and click Save here. And their check mark is there showing that it's enabled and we didn't get any errors. So, so far, so good. And we should be able to send a uh, beacon out from my HT and have it populate here on the map. I'm going to go ahead and try that now. There's the beacon that goes out. And you can see that it popped up right there on the map. So, so far, so good. We've got one successful test running. Now, let's go ahead and do some more configuring. So, again, I'm going to go back up to File, Configure, and Expert Mode. Once that Configure dialog box opens up, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the DigiPeat tab. And we want to enable Wide 1.1 and Wide 2.2. Next, let's go ahead and jump back over to our ports tab. We want to highlight that first port that we created and let's edit it. When the edit dialog box opens up, again down here for DigiPeats for the port, we want to tell it Wide 1.1, we want to enable that one, and we want to enable Wide 2-2. Once you have those two boxes selected, let's go ahead and click on the Save button. And now we're going to look at our beacon. Right here under the beacon, we want to enable station beacon, and the beacon type is a position. You will need to go ahead and fill out your latitude and your longitude uh, so that you're placed correctly on the map, and then just pick a display symbol that you want to use. In this particular case, I'm going to leave it set to the farm tractor. Once we've got those changes made, we can go ahead and click Save Changes. And now we can go ahead and close this Configure window again. 
Now, real quick, I want to go ahead and open up the browser. And what I want to take a look at is I want to make sure that I am getting my station beacon out to APRS.FI. So from a browser, we're going to type APRS.FI forward slash. And I'm going to give it the name of this station. So that was km 4 ack dash Three. Let's go ahead and press return and make sure that we're showing up on APRS.FI. And you can see that we are indeed showing up. So that's August 23rd at 4.44 in the afternoon, which is the current time. Here's 21.44 for Zulu, but my local time is 14.44. So at this point, you have a working Digipeter. Now, you would not iGate anything into the internet. I'll go ahead and show you guys real quick where you could configure that if you wanted to be an iGate as well. Again, we're going to come down to configure. We're going to come down to expert mode. Let's go ahead and go back to our ports tab and let's add a new port. This time we do not need another serial TNC. We're going to click the drop down button again and we're going to select APRS-IS. Here you need to pick your server host name. If you're in North America, this is a good one to choose here. If you're somewhere else in the world, obviously use the closer one to you. We do want to go ahead and click retry connect indefinitely. That way it does attempt to uh, it does attempt to try to recover if there is any sort of error. Maybe you lose an internet connection for a little bit. Uh, you do want that to try to connect. Leave the server port alone as it is. The call sign right here is pre-populated for us. And then you need your APRS.IS password. I'll leave a link to the website where you can get your password down in the description below. So check down there and we'll show you exactly where to go to get that information. Now let me go ahead and enter my password there. After you put your password in, let's go ahead and uh, tell the transmit to be enabled and then we can click save. Assuming you entered everything correctly, you should have a check mark here that stays. For some sort of error, these things will automatically uncheck themselves instead of keep trying uh, to run. But assuming that you got all of that information entered correctly, that check mark should stay. One other thing before we wrap this up today, I'm going to go ahead and add one more port here. This time we want to go to the drop down and we want to add GPSD. Now this is strictly if you're trying to configure a GPS device and this assumes that you've already got the device configured and running with GPSD on your system. Assuming that you do, you would simply fill out, uh, you would simply select the port type right here and then click save to have GPS enabled devices. If you do decide to connect a GPS to this and configure it, you want to come back to the beacon tab and you want to put a check mark here. It won't let me, it's grayed out because I don't have GPS set up for this particular machine. But uh, if you did, you do want to come back and say use GPS for position. So that's it guys. There's a look at how to set up Yak to use a MobiLink TNC and an inexpensive handheld to be a DigiPeter. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.